Hello everyone, welcome to another video. It is Francesco here. I hope everyone's doing really, really well and have enjoyed their week so far. And what we're going to be doing in this feature is something that I've been meaning to do for quite a while on this channel. Now, I know a lot of you guys have been eagerly awaiting me to check out like TikTik -tick as a whole. Now, for those who don't know, TikTik -tick is like a to-do list application that is a bit of an alternative to the likes of Todoist, at the moment, Microsoft To Do, uh, but previously Wunderlist, and a couple of other personal to-do list applications like the like of To Do and Things 3. Now, I've spent a bit of time on TikTik, -tick, uh, just sort of experiencing it, sort of getting used to it and understanding all of the functions and features. So I'll be reviewing the freemium version of this experience. I'll probably do another review of the Pro to sort of understand whether the upgrade from freemium uh, is worth a value. So we'll be going over a full TikTik -tick review in this video. So the first experience I'd like to start with is adding of a task. Now, of course, adding of a task is so important and adding the context to a task is even more important when it comes to personal productivity applications. So as you can see here, I'm on the add task to inbox. So I'm gonna put a task up, maybe like uh, clean the bedroom, which could be a task for today. So you can obviously add a uh, time, uh, a specific time to be done, which I like because I, I'm, I'm into this chronological thing. So for example, I'm gonna do this uh, later today, for example. So set a time of maybe 3 p.m. over here. Uh, of course, you can get a sort of nudge five to 30 minutes before and also um, other times as well. So if I wanted to get it uh, on time five minutes before, uh, if I wanted to have a custom amount of time, that is a premium feature. So that's something just to note there. So if I click set to repeat, obviously you can put recurring tasks. Uh, so that could be a weekly task, for example, or you can have a custom task uh, for every week going on certain days, which is quite cool. Very similar to other productivity applications, but that feature I really like in an application. So you've also got uh, priority levels here. So this is obviously the web version. I'll point towards the sort of mobile version too. I'll probably do a separate review on that one on iOS because this experience is, um, I like the sort of like uh, exclamation marks here. So you've got priority levels. Uh, you've got high, medium, low, which is quite nice. And I like that low is in a blue color. That sort of makes it a bit colder, I guess. Um, and you can move it to your project, which is inbox in this case, because I haven't actually set up any projects. As you can see, uh, that feeds into your uh, tasks. Uh, if you click all, it will come up with today, no dates and completed, which is, I guess, quite a useful setup because if you want to see any completed tasks that are down there below uh, and no, ta no date will be there as well. So you can be like, oh, did I accidentally create this one? I'm gonna delete it. Um, if you click into a task, uh, you've obviously got um, the ability to tick it off, which is good. Uh, you've got uh, this sort of checklist ability as well, so you can just modify this. You can have it as simply as a description or as a checklist. So if I wanted to be like, okay, dust the drawers, uh, reorganize books, for example, etc., and you can have all of those as subtasks and move them about as well, which is quite nice. That's something that I think the likes of Todoist lack, like, um, which I think is a nice feature. Things have introduced it in their new feature, but again, I don't want to do a comparison video here, but I will be doing a full to do uh, to do versus uh, tick tick comparison. Um, because I think they're probably the most similar in platforms. So down here, you can obviously modify it to a new project. The one thing I probably would have liked here, although maybe it's a bit trivial, is being able to create a project from here. But then again, uh, that might be a bit distracting. You can add comments as well. So that's when you start signing people or you can just leave comments for yourself, which is very beneficial. Up here, you can upload an attachment, which I like. You can actually view the task history. However, that is a premium feature. A viewing task is probably quite helpful if you've got a team. Let me just test a PDF uh, of a image. Okay, uh, it's uploading. That's a simple 700K uh, PDF that's going there. And of course, that's uh, that's not viewable though. That's a bit of a shame, but it is re-downloadable and deletable. So you can actually, I guess you could view it on your iPhone, which is good. Uh, up here, you've also got the ability to tick it off and untick it off. Uh, what I like about this is it's sort of like uh, really well designed in terms of everything. So if I were to um, click high, for example, this would go red over here and you can see it's correlated. Um, you can also see that the iconography gives you an indication that there's a checklist involved. I love that. That's a very smart little feature there and something they've paid uh, attention into detail on. 
I like here that you can actually give yourself an indication of how long, how much of the task you have completed. Uh, it will actually give you an indication there of how much it actually is completed. Um, but you can actually give that a, a nice little feature. Again, something small, but something very nice uh, to have in design. So as you can see, we're still in all here, but you can click today and see the just today view. Uh, and obviously when you click there, I like that the inbox is at the top. That's something that I like because you can drop down and add tasks. However, it doesn't drop down um, and open up anything. It just keeps this. So it's sort of good for like dumping tasks, I guess, into the inbox for today specifically. So it will add any task today that will go into the inbox. I, I can imagine when I do that, it will obviously grow up. Obviously, you've got hide completed. That's nice. Um, you can obviously print title and context. You can sort by list, time, title, priority, which is quite cool. Uh, very simple stuff here. The next seven days, again, is probably one of my favorite views inside of a uh, to do this application because it sort of gives this um, sort of like next seven days, I think, is the valuable thing because you want to see what you've got up planning. I think the one thing that TickTick is mostly renowned for is the calendar function. So being able to see a calendar and correlate tasks to it. Now, this is a pro feature. However, it's something that people rave about and something that I will be checking out in the full pro review. Now, you've also got inbox here. So this is the one project I've created. You can see the completed there. But if I wanted to get rid of the completed, you can see it there. You can also get list activities again for the project inside of um, Pro, Pro uh, which is very beneficial. Now, of course, lists down here are important. So if I wanted to create a list, uh, so for example, uh, movies to watch, the very cliche one, you can add it to a folder. Uh, so for example, uh, fun, the folder of fun, and that folder appears automatically there. You can actually have it hidden, uh, which means that uh, the task within the list won't show up inside of today, tomorrow, next seven days, or any other smart lists but you'll still be reminded. I think this is a nice feature because you, for example, you can have like an evening one that would mean that you can have an evening one that won't appear up in those, but you could also have like lists, like for example, this movies to watch list. I don't want to associate a due date to them necessarily. I just want to might be reminded on the day that I'm going to see them and they might need to appear in the calendar. So that's a beneficial function. Now, as you can see, you can start dumping tasks into there. Um, once you've got that project folder, you can actually share it um, to other people, actually enable them to edit it too. And got going. I believe that's a premium feature to invite other people, but again, very beneficial. You've also got tags as well. So for example, if I were to be like uh, Alien Covenant, which I saw with my dad last week, and if I go on tags, it could be like movies. And once I add it, obviously movies appears and the tag is created itself and you can see all of the hashtags with movies, which is quite a handy way of seeing everything. You've also got custom smart list, which means you can create your own smart list based on stuff. It's very similar to the filters feature in Todoist, but again, can be a very beneficial way in organizing like tags, dates, priority levels, and sort of bring everything together like that. Now down here, there's this summary beta now, I'm not sure what this is. I, I sort of understand it now. I like this. I like this. So this is a very similar feature to the likes of uh, Things 3 with the sort of today summary roundup of the day uh, of activities. And this is something that you can add to uh, and export as well, which is quite nice. Um, so the summary feature, I guess, is being brought to pro users. Um, it will bring pro bring pro users the enhanced feature in the future so this is something that they're probably working on but it's sort of like a nice visual as you can see it's correlated the undone in progress tasks and actually blinked it to the amount of percentages it's done by very cool because i like that's one problem in productivity is being able to see a snapshot of your day in a big vision and having something like this could be pretty cool although it's very texty at the moment like a report would be nice but a very like comfortable report versus like a I don't know, overcomplicated report. As you can see in completed, you can see everything you've completed today, all the lists. Uh, you've obviously got advanced search in Pro. So a lot of this is hidden behind uh, Pro, but something that I know that a lot of people are using. You can actually delete and trash stuff as well, which is quite nice. Um, over here, you've also got search. You've got basic search. So if I want to search movies, then everything comes up there. But if I want to search hashtag movies, Oh yeah, it still comes up, so uh, that's pretty cool. And you can see the state, oh no, that's in advance. So everything in the filter functions are hidden in advance uh, in the pro function. 
So you can hit the emoji here and you can see the uh, notifications that come up any updates to shared lists. So over here, you've obviously got your profile. Uh, you can sync it, which means it will sync uh, automatically, which is great. You can hit settings too, uh, which is quite cool. And obviously preferences, you can see the start of the day, the, the, the smart date passing, which is something that you can do about being recognized, uh, like the dates being recognized in the text you type up which again is like intelligent input. You've got themes, which I really like. I think this is like the the feature that would tip a lot of people to pro. You can have city series and season series. You can't upload your own images. However, that's pretty cool to have. Smart list as well. You can go into so much detail on it. Uh, again, with calendar, you can add accounts. So you can add your Google calendar. So it brings everything together and you can add by URL. Subscribe, tick, tick uh, in your calendar as well, and even email in tasks, which is a nice function. I believe that's a Freeman feature. Um, you've got a backup as well, so you can actually import data from other apps, the likes of Wunderlist, OmniFocus, Asteroid, SpringPad, although SpringPad is probably not about anymore. Toodaloo and iCal, these are all uh, exported in JSON or CSV, which is good. Um, I don't see a Todoist one, but I can imagine they're going to add it. Now, there are a few lab features which I like, like you can actually have a mini calendar uh, to appear. Obviously, a mini calendar is a pro feature and task duplication. So you can create templates and quickly create tasks. Again, these are not fully functional features, uh, but again, still improving. As you can see, you can actually go on your profile uh, and actually see how many complete tasks you've got completed, how many lists you've got and how much account time you've had. Uh, and apparently I'm working harder than the 43% of other people on here um, so far, which is pretty cool. Again, there's going to be more information. The pro, pro functions for uh, a year are very similar pricing to Todoist. So you've got about $3 a month, $2.79 and $27.99 a year, which is pretty good. You get subscribed calendar, calendar, mini calendar, more list, task, custom, uh, thing, uh, custom smart list. Checklist and text, reminders for subtasks, which is actually probably a beneficial feature to have. Multiple reminders, so that's multiple reminders on one or more uh, timings before an event. More attachments, more collaborations. List and task activities advanced and add tasks via Siri, which is what I mentioned the other day. So you can actually connect that quite easily to Siri. Uh, now, the, you've also got a redeem there. You've also got shortcuts. So you can learn all of the shortcuts there and again, support, which is pretty handy. Now, if you want my full opinions on TickTick, I think it's a very strong competitor to the likes of Todoist and other applications like that. What's good about it as well is it's got good pricing, so it's available uh, for more people. So it's, it's got that calendar function, which sort of separates a bit from Todoist. Uh, it's got a few other functions that make it a little more uh, interactive. It's, it's available on a lot of platforms too, so you can get it on iOS and Android, and also, of course, web as well, and a couple of other ones, which I'll include in the description. Now, I think this application as a whole is probably one of the best out there. I rate it in the top five at the moment. Now that Wunderlist is gone, now that to do is something that uh, is very weak in its experience. So I definitely rank it in the top five. It's definitely a consideration. I would recommend it for people looking for a really fluid experience that isn't necessarily professional focused, but maybe they're a freelancer or someone who's uh, developing their own business that doesn't want a too serious experience. Like GTD isn't going to be applied here necessarily, although it can be uh, to certain things. It's more of a fixed experience and a way for you to get started. I think this is a nice application. I'd recommend going pro because there seems to be a lot hidden behind that paywall, which is great. Uh, and it's at good price. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this overview of TickTick. I know I've been meaning to check it out for a while. I'll be doing a review on the iOS app, the Pro app, uh, the Pro experience, and probably uh, looking at Todoist versus TickTick within the next couple of weeks so that you can get a full understanding of what the experience is like. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to have a great week, keep productive, and I'll see you guys very soon. Cheers. Cheers.